Добрый день, коллеги. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Roman Ovchinikov. I'm head of execution department at Security Vision. Well, we're going to talk a bit about MSSP, but firstly, I'd like to share uh, my impression of the pre previous presentation. I'm uh, not trying to say anything, but I just understood uh, once again how our information security uh, market is so uh, small, considering uh, that uh, the market was valued as uh, 90 or 100 million rubles, a billion rubles. Then we have an IT project uh, which is comparable in size. We just uh, need to understand how uh, high we can grow. Today, I would like uh, to talk about MSSP, uh, to touch upon this subject, and in particular on some uh, subtle points about incident uh, management in the MSSP model. Let's start with the simple. So what is MSSP? MSSP is a provider of services in the area of information security. So in the beginning, we had MSP providers uh, who were more about providing IT services. And then it evolved. In addition to IT, uh, information security uh, came uh, to be needed. And so MSSP uh, emerged uh, as a provider, to pro uh, to a provider of services in information security. Uh, an MSS provider is a company uh, that spends 100% uh, of their efforts uh, regarding uh, information security. It's their business. It's uh, their core business. It generates their revenues. Uh, this is uh, where all their expertise and everything else focuses. As uh, to the MSP services, there are quite uh, uh, a lot of them, uh, something uh, to deal with the uh, provision of security of the infrastructure, uh, awareness, uh, protectedness, and one of the uh, most asked for uh, services uh, what is uh, rega regarding the commercial SOC and everything to do with it, monitoring, investigations, uh, incident response. So today, I'm not going to talk about the the MSSP market as it is, but about a small part uh, related to commercial SOCs. Uh, why uh, do we need MSSPs? As I said, uh, they uh, concentrate uh, uh, the expertise. This expertise can be scaled for customers, for the customers to a quick start, getting a budget, getting a quality product, and uh, no need to build everything uh, within their organizations so they can uh, pass something on to the partners. Why did I want to talk about this now? Because historically, the MSSP market uh, was not so uh, large in Russia compared to the worldwide market. In the world, uh, the MSSP market has been growing uh, since uh, for quite a long time now. Uh, uh, whereas in this country, it didn't happen that way. But there were uh, several drivers, catalyzers, uh, that uh, also pushed this trend. I think the first point was COVID, uh, when everybody went uh, home to work, uh, when a lot of uh, things uh, were disrupted, logistics and other things, uh, the companies had to change all this, and uh, also uh, they had to change uh, the information security processes. That's uh, That was the point where MSP started uh, to grow exponentially. And the second uh, point in time uh, was at the end of February this year, where again uh, we got uh, information security problems. Everybody is aware of them. I'm not going to talk about them in detail, but that was another driver uh, to push uh, the MSSP market up in Russia. As I've already said, uh, we're going to uh, focus your attention on uh, commercial SOC services. When you're talking about SOCs as a whole, we've been talking about them for a long time in different conferences. We've always been, uh, we've always been saying uh, that uh, SOCs need expertise, uh, talent, uh, routine tasks. And so one of the solutions uh, is automation. If we're talking about MSP provider, uh, then it's all even doubly important there. Uh, so the level of MSSP providers in the commercial so, uh, uh, SOC uh, to analyze all the incidents uh, is just a pipeline, it's a conveyor belt. Uh, so for them, 
the, it's even more important uh, that they could organize their work uh, efficiently, uh, that they uh, should uh, assure a high quality of their decisions. They need to be protected from errors. And because uh, they're providing this as a service, it's also very important for them uh, to stay within their own SLA uh, commitments uh, that they have uh, as part of their, their customer contracts. So for them, everything to do with the automation of their activities, and in particular, monitoring, uh, investigation, response uh, uh, is especially important for them. We, as a vendor uh, that deals uh, with the automation of information security process management, we see that. So we see that the MSSP market is growing. On the other hand, uh, we see their needs in automation. And so uh, it's about some specific features about MSSP management regarding automation. Uh, I would like to talk today. So the first thing, the first part is about the uh, processing. Uh, when I say processing, I mean everything. Uh, life cycle, uh, regulations, uh, way book, everything. Uh, I, playbooks, I uh, brought it all together. Uh, so there are uh, several differences here uh, compared to a cl classic in-house SOC. Firstly, a commercial SOC, an MSSP provider SOC, processes incidents that they get from different customers. So uh, the most important task uh, when they get some alert, some event, uh, the first, uh, the main task for them uh, is uh, to understand uh, which uh, customer or tenant uh, this event belongs to. Why is it so important? Because uh, the MSSP uh, may provide services in different ways, uh, cloud services, hybrid services, in-house services. Uh, they may use all different automation tools and uh, CM systems. Actually, uh, quite often they use a CMs for monitoring. These CM systems can be different. Even in the same commercial SOC, uh, it is quite often that they have several CMs installed at the same time. And when customers are connected, uh, customer CMs can be used. So you have diverse CMs, each of which uh, has uh, its uh, own multi-tenancy mode. Uh, they have different uh, words for that, terms for that, um, domain, uh, customer, tenant, and so on. Everywhere, uh, the, a way uh, to uh, determine uh, the ownership of their love uh, is uh, their own. And it's uh, very important uh, for the MSP provider uh, to identify the ownership uh, correctly. Because uh, further on, all the processes uh, that are going to be uh, used uh, should uh, ensure uh, the separation of data between customers. The second part, it's about the imp implementation of playbooks, life cycles, and things like that. If we're talking about a normal in-house SOC talk, uh, then when we're drawing up uh, a, an incident management process, uh, when we uh, draw up a, a response playbook, we uh, proceed from the fact that we uh, know very accurately, ac accurately uh, our infrastructure and policies and other things, and we can use uh, these details uh, to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of our process. Uh, the MSSP provider um, cannot, is not in the position of uh, operating uh, this uh, data because they're providing a service to a broad range of customers, so they need to have some standardization, uh, unification. So everything uh, that they use in their processes, playbooks, and automation uh, mechanism uh, should be categorized and generalized. What do I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, just a simple chain in uh, some playbook. If we say uh, that a category A event has happened, uh, we need to uh, perform a series of actions on some category B nodes and also send notifications to a group of persons of category C. So in the provider uh, uh, playbooks, uh, it's exactly the way these things are explained. All these vari variables should dynamically uh, go to specific playbooks and uh, processes depending on the customer, the tenant that the service is being provided to. 
The next point, it's about uh, the thing that uh, because we're uh, offering a service to someone, we need to keep them informed. We can't uh, uh, just uh, wait until the end of the incident, uh, investigation and the reporting period, uh, so we've done this and we're good guys. No, uh, in the very life cycle of the incident, uh, we have to be in constant uh, touch with the customer. Uh, so there's a suspicion of an incident uh, that we've logged. Uh, we need to inform the customer about that. Uh, we proceeded uh, with the investigation and categorization. We need to keep the customer informed. We uh, finished them f uh, these operations. So we confirmed that this was an incident. Then we also pass information. Uh, we issue some recommendations to the customer of what they need to do to respond to this Also, uh, we inform them about that. So it's important that at every stage of the life cycle, you need to uh, be in close collaboration and communication with your customer. Uh, the next point. It's about, well, again, when we're talking about an in-house SOC, you are inside this company, you have access uh, to the entire infrastructure, to all the people and so on. When we are talking about commercial SOC, uh, we have uh, several uh, entry points as contact persons and don't have all the required access. So we need to build our process based on this, on this, uh, on this understanding. What do I mean? Let me give you an example. Uh, a classic brute force attack. What usually uh, uh, do uh, people in the penthouse, in the in-house SOC? Well, one of the first actions is to uh, try to phone or get in touch uh, with the person linked to this incident and say, check what, they, what they've been doing. Uh, in a commercial SOC, uh, the operator does not have access to this employee and they have to act through a contact person. Or another incident with privileges, for instance, if in a classic uh, SOC, the operator could look uh, up in some uh, service desk where the, uh, there has been a ticket, uh, an official ticket uh, to uh, raise the privileges for this employee. Uh, a specialist in the commercial SOC uh, cannot have this information during the investigation. They need to get it additionally. And this all has to be taken account of uh, when uh, designing the processing process. Also, uh, because uh, many people work with MSSP providers following a model that everything is in the cloud that's with the provider, then all, a lot of things related to the execution or certain actions uh, are performed by the customer themselves manually, following the recommendations from the provider. So you need uh, to include in your playbook that there are phases that uh, we can't control directly uh, that can uh, take an indefinite time and where we are going to operate in some kind of vacuum. Uh, you need to keep uh, constantly in touch with the customer. Why is it so important? Because as a minimum, uh, when we're talking uh, about uh, these uh, things, uh, you need to take account uh, of these things. You need uh, to include uh, the uh, response uh, time when you're outsourcing uh, something uh, to the MSSP. Uh, also, uh, customers are not always uh, very fast to respond, and you get new uh, tasks. So, for instance, if you don't see that uh, there's no feedback with the customer as a result of your action, they're not responding, you need to nudge them, uh, keep nudging them, uh, asking them, is everything clear? Do you need any additional help? Uh, have you closed the incident, and so on? So it's also very important. The next point. Uh, uh, let me just uh, call it, uh, it's uh, about interaction uh, with the infrastructure and uh, the employees. Uh, MSSP is a service uh, for a broad range of customers. Some of them are critical information, uh, information inf infrastructure uh, operation, operator. Uh, others uh, uh, need to have additional information uh, about employees and sites. It's all part of a certain uh, playbooks on uh, the uh, interaction uh, with uh, FeedSat and critical infrastructure uh, control. Uh, I will really mention that customer interaction is a must. Uh, there are two important uh, tools here. The first uh, type of inter uh, interaction goes uh, through some portal or a uh, personal account, uh, the customer account. 
внутри этой инфраструктуры можно взаимодействовать. Uh, that has all the information it needs, and also this portal uh, might uh, also have some uh, capabilities uh, to modernize uh, the forms of providing the information uh, to the customer, because as uh, you have seen, uh, the presentation of information uh, that we can uh, is not needed by the customer, so you need to mask some data. Uh, the next point, we're talking an indefinite range of customers. Uh, like we know that today uh, there are 10 of them, uh, in a month there can be 12. Uh, you have uh, to uh, take account of certain aspects of your customer. Maybe uh, they're talking to you from different time zones, maybe they'll speak your language. So when interacting via some uh, portals or uh, personal account uh, pages, uh, you need uh, to take account uh, of uh, the aspects of them being able to understand you. So the interface, the UI, uh, language, time zone, because not everybody uh, lives in your time zone. And the final point is that if we have organized uh, a portal like this, and uh, perhaps uh, we uh, might uh, push the other part uh, that uh, respons uh, is responsible uh, for incident response. And then you have a task of synchronizing the data about incidents between uh, your, own, your main system and the one uh, that you've made publicly available, and so on. The second format of interaction, and one of the most acknowledged ones, is uh, via mail, mail notification. Uh, what uh, kind of subtleties can uh, we run into here? The first thing, and for me it was a surprise, uh, MSSP providers, for them, interaction via email may be the only channel of interaction with the customer. If, uh, if they don't have a web portal, uh, so uh, I understand all the interaction about incidents is happening over email. So it looks uh, like uh, email is a face uh, that the provider uh, uses uh, to talk to the customer. And here, uh, a lot of things, uh, a lot depends on uh, the uh, format of the letter, uh, of the message. Uh, uh, it's not enough that you've provided the information about what you found. You always also have to wrap it up uh, in uh, the attractive form. And here we uh, have seen situation where it's not just uh, plain text, but different formats, RTF, HTML, and so on. Uh, second, uh, email is sometimes only the only way of interaction between uh, the customer and MSP provider. Uh, in those cases, uh, you uh, get tempted uh, to manage the incident, like the MSSP info, uh, you ask for some info for the information about the incident. So we've seen that. Uh, we've taken, uh, we'll find this information. Uh, please uh, review it yourselves and make a decision, uh, whether it's a uh, feature or a, uh, an incident. The customer uh, wants uh, to answer this question, and this should affect the life cycle of the incident in the automation tools of the MSSP provider. It looks like uh, we've provided an answer in the email. This answer should be transformed in some uh, understandable format in the automation tool. Uh, it should initiate the res uh, respective playbook and lead to the respective actions. Next thing. Uh, Interaction control, it's more about human factor. Whenever we're talking about MSP, again, we have lots of customers, we should not a notification with uh, some information about one customer to another customer. We can't sell, say, send uh, information about uh, customer A uh, incident, uh, mentioning URLs and domains uh, to customer B. And that should be obvious uh, to uh, the operator, and it should be uh, expressed in the playbook in order not to allow that. And the last thing here is personal, personalized uh, patterns, uh, templates. So all, everything to do with the customer. I'm running up, let me speed up. So the next point, 
It's about SLAs. Uh, if it's an in-house SOC, you have a clear uh, set of metrics uh, that shows that your SOC uh, is working correctly. Uh, in the MSSP case, you have a set of SLAs uh, depending on uh, the level of service for the customer, or the composition of services that we are uh, providing them, and you uh, have to bear it all in mind uh, so that uh, you shouldn't uh, break some SLA as you are uh, providing the service. And so that uh, these SLAs uh, should uh, be complied with, quite often uh, there's a question about the distribution of the overall uh, inflow of alerts uh, over the operators, because this is the finite resource. Uh, whenever we're talking about some uh, a situation where the in-house SOC uses the first uh, two options, where there's a common uh, queue and operators pick up calls from this queue. Uh, there is, uh, you can also load balance uh, it and automate it. In MMSPs, quite often, uh, they use uh, some additional automation tools, some magic formulae uh, that uh, use some logic to distribute the incidents uh, across uh, the agents, uh, depending on a set of uh, attributes. And so it's uh, very important uh, for us uh, so that it shouldn't uh, get too uh, difficult uh, to become a, uh, an obstacle. And uh, finally, uh, we can have uh, uh, dedicated teams to work with specific customers. And the uh, well, last thing regarding reporting. If uh, we are talking about an in-house SOC, uh, reporting means some statistics on uh, the services that uh, we are providing, some monitoring. We may be interested in uh, some distribution across incidents, uh, the stages in attacks, uh, SLA, uh, processing time. But uh, if we're talking about uh, the MSSP reporting, quite often uh, the first uh, block here is uh, about the execution of SLA uh, for the service. We need to know uh, how well uh, we have uh, complied we, uh, with uh, the SLA uh, commitments, uh, what was uh, the response time, availability time, uh, and uh, if you, ha you need to work with this data, and you want to build a, uh, a report uh, that would be available in the same uh, place, but uh, the data come from different systems, and you need to use different systems uh, to uh, consolidate uh, the data. Also, uh, we need to have this report parameterized so that uh, we could uh, uh, prepare this report, let's say, for customer A. I think I haven't forgotten everything, anything from what I wanted to uh, share. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm prepared to take them. Well, if there are no questions, then thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you're welcome to our security vision booth, uh, and we can give you a little bit more details on uh, certain aspects. Good day.